Kansas City rush hour starting behind me. It's about four o'clock. Kind of a beautiful city. by Lieutenant Spremberg, commander of the 5th Company Infantry Regiment 52, German Army, November 20th, 1917. We saw the tank about 100 meters ahead of us, advancing and holding the entire village street under its fire. However, we quickly sprang into and behind the tank. We tried at first to throw hand grenades under the track of the tank. That succeeded. Although the uh, idea of the hand grenade dates back to the Middle Ages, uh, the trenches and dugouts of World War I brought a uh, new focus to the weapon. It's what you'd call a two-pronged weapon. It's not particular about who it kills. You don't aim it. You throw it into the general vicinity of the weapon of the enemy. On soft turf, uh, much of the power behind the shrapnel is absorbed by the, uh, by the, the sod. However, on a hard pavement, it's uh, far more lethal. At the start of World War I, British soldiers were making their own grenades out of uh, jam jars uh, and scrap metal and explosives. And by 1915, the Germans were mass producing stick grenades. Uh, you could throw them a lot further. Uh, it was also known by English speaking soldiers as the potato masher. The British uh, needed to counter this and in turn they developed the Mills bomb along with its classic pineapple pattern and of course when it explodes this pineapple pattern makes it easier for the casing to shatter into lethal pieces of shrapnel. Uh, a bombing party referred to a patrol which would sneak through no man's land and uh, they'd drop grenades into enemy dugouts. Fascinating. Um, we're talking about the aces here. Uh, it says um, they were regarded as aerial knights who respected each other even as they fought. Skill, bravery, and luck, not just numbers and machines, could determine victory. Everyone knew the names of the aces, pilots who had shot down five or more enemy planes. They were celebrated as national heroes, and their exploits became legendary. Germans, Germany's Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron was the leading ace with 80 victories against Allied aircraft. The pilots shown here from Germany and Allied nations scored numerous victories each, placing them among the top airmen of the war. Billy Bishop was Canada's top ace, and he was also the recipient of the Victoria Cross. Uh, he was credited with 72 victories. Uh, one of the things, though, with his Victoria Cross, normally it requires witnesses. He often brought back his own accounts of kills, 
and it was um, some suspected that maybe sometimes he embellished his successes, but again, that's just speculation. <clears throat> anyway, he was born in Owen Sound as an avid sportsman and a notorious truant. He had a reputation as a fighter, and at age 15, he built an aircraft out of cardboard and wood, and he flew it off the top floor, the third floor of his parents' house, uh, he being inside that uh, contraption, which was eventually, which very shortly ended up as a wreckage from which his sister pulled him. He was expelled for from RMC, that is the Canada's uh, Military Academy, for cheating on a test. But very shortly after that, again, he became as much acclaimed as a pilot uh, in his uh, with his no holds barred style of fighting. Uh, after his first patrol, a mechanic had counted 210 bullet holes in his plane, and uh, he at the time had led led his fighters into combat from the very front in the typical dashing cavalry style World War I kind of action but he modified realizing that, that he didn't have much hope of lasting the war out like that he modified his fighting style to more like a, an ambush predator. So anyway, Canada's uh, top ace, Billy Bishop. So here we are back in Canada, Guelph, Ontario to be exact. Uh, John McCray House behind me. Uh, distinguished Canadian poet, well, maybe not distinguished, he wrote a poem uh, in Belgium, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae in Flanders Fields. I think many people would know it. And this is his house behind me. So, I mean, nine million people dying uh, in this conflict, or at least nine million on the battlefield, uh, drawn from all corners of the world. And this being one of the corners, Guelph, Ontario, uh, at one time, obviously, a very quiet pastoral community in southern Ontario. I mean, pretty sombering when you think about it. You know, young people drawn from all over the, the world to fight in these foreign battlefields that still occurs today and will no doubt continue well into the future. So, as it says here, in Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely sing and fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. John McRae, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, came from this exact dwelling, and no doubt, as a young man fished Speed River just across the way.